Good evening, everyone. Now, uh, thank you for joining us this evening. We so much appreciate every one of you coming to join us this evening. May the Lord bless you. Uh, this evening, allow the Lord to minister to you once again uh, as uh, you know, we move on into this evening service. Uh, a number of announcements. Please take note of these. Uh, the government, uh, the federal government, announced that uh, our churches can meet again, but that has been uh, left to the priority of state governments, so please, uh, uh, anytime Lego State says you can meet, you shall be informed, please begin to prepare yourself, dust up those shoes, wash up those shirts and the suits and the dresses, and let's begin to get ready soon we will be gathering in our auditorium and having a good time in the presence of God. Uh, keep up also in the social life as you go up uh, with the guidelines of COVID-19, uh, washing your hands, sanitizing your hands, uh, uh, keep up with uh, the social distancing, with face masks, and everything else that's involved with that. Uh, and I shall tell you, you shall be safe. Amen. Uh, a number of other things is uh, uh, remember we have prayer every Thursday. Join us for prayer uh, uh, you know, every Thursday between 6 and 7. Make time to join us for that. Uh, it's going to be a great, great time. Uh, every time we do that, there's been dimensions. We prayed for so many people. Uh, that have COVID-19, even in the United States of America, all of them have been discharged. What a miracle of God. Uh, and I'm telling you that uh, uh, it means you can bring them before uh, that whole forum when you're praying. Things will be taken care of. Amen. Um, remember to give. Listen, we need your giving. We need you to, to be faithful uh, in uh, your giving. We need the resources. We are at a time of where Stayed three months without services or if you as we depleted, uh, we just challenge everybody to be faithful to that. Uh, God will bless you. God will bless you. God will bless you. Amen. And uh, this evening, I want you to turn your Bibles again to the book of Hebrews. And I want to go on in a series on uh, faith. Uh, in this series, the first one I did was a faith of Sarah. That faith uh, uh, talked about the faith that uh, believes that uh, uh, sustains, and that uh, uh, faith that sustains, you know, keep on believing. Uh, even in difficult circumstances, you keep believing. Sarah was told she'd be pregnant. She got pregnant and believed for nine months until she had a child. That's the faith of Sarah's, uh, Sarah. The second one, we have the faith of Noah. And that's a faith that prepares before the actual event. Noah built a ark before the event. And uh, that's a type of faith also that you have to believe God that this event is going to happen. This is going to happen in my life and what you do, you begin to prepare for that event to come to happen. Today we're going to look at Hebrews 11 verses 32 and uh, look at another dimension of faith. Uh, and this one is going to be titled Faith, a Weapon. Using faith as a weapon, the two of them. Hebrews 11, verses 32 to 35. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me. To tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire escapes the edge of the sword. Out of, weak, out of weakness, they are made strong. They came valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of elders. Women received their dead, uh, women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting their lives, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the grace of mercy. Thank you for this speaking of God, your word of God. God, speak once again. Challenge us, our hearts, God, our faith, God, as we put it on the line. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Faith is a very bloodline of your relationship with God. It's what keeps it happening. It's what keeps 
your relationship with God alive. Without faith, Hebrews 11, 6, it's impossible to please Him. In other words, it's saying if you don't have faith, your relationship with God will be a standoff. You'll be there and you'll be over here. Faith is what connects you to God and God to you. The belief, the trust you have in God, that is critical. But you have to understand that faith is not just, I believe in God, I trust in God. Our text here is talking about the author of Hebrews has mentioned many people. And he says, listen, I have many more. Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, who through faith subdued kings. They worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped mouths of lies, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness we are made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of enemies. Women received their day raised to life again. In a nutshell, all these people were able to turn their faith to become a weapon they used to advance on the enemy. Mouth of lions were shut because they used their faith as a weapon in the lion. Kingdoms were subdued. They used their faith to subdue kingdoms. And the element of faith I want to bring to your aspect today is that you have a similar faith. That there are things that you need to subdue. All I'm saying is you have the capacity by your faith. You want to work righteousness, you have the capacity by your faith. Obtain promises, faith. Stop mouths of lions, faith. Quench the violence of fire, faith. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness be made strong, faith. Be valiant in battle, faith. Turn, turn to fly the armies of aliens, faith. Bring the dead to life again, faith. All these people learned to make their faith into a weapon. Any good weapon. Extension of your arm. 
It becomes like just an extension, an appendage that you use to move and you're able to assault the excellent sort. Your faith has to get to dimensions whereby you can use it as a weapon to assault those that are resisting your progress. Those that are resisting in their community. Years ago, when we came to Nigeria to pioneer this church, my wife and I, we got here and when we went around, there were, you know, Nigeria, you know, Lagos, there are churches everywhere. I'm talking everywhere. And uh, a man, you know, came and asked me to say, you know, why do you want to start a church? And I said, listen, I'm called by God. I feel because he says, listen, there are churches here. And it was true, there are churches. There's a street right behind us here, Second Avenue. <clears throat> there were churches after church after church after church. I went there one day, I counted, I counted 60 churches in a, in a about two mile road. 60 churches. All of them on Sunday, people are gathered in there, you know, and they're saying you're going to start a church. And listen, the resistance is there. The discouragement is there. But somewhere inside of me, my faith was willing to assault that resistance. I was set out preaching to people, talking to people in the streets. And with that faith, God was able to formulate a church to where we are today. I'm saying to you, you see, many on many occasions, the enemy looks bigger. The story of David and Goliath. It tells us that Goliath was a huge man, a warrior, a man of war. Goliath was a trained soldier, commander. And he came out to fight a guy who had only defeated a bear and a lion. A kid. That's why he said to him, you come to me with sticks, am I a dog? But what he did not understand in the weapons of David, in those stones, faith was attached to it. Such that David could hail that stone at Goliath. And the faith of where he aimed was directed to the paw on the forehead and killed Goliath in one shot. David did not carry weapons of you know, this carried swords and AK-47, no. But he had a dimension of faith. The excellence of your weapons get their power or the, that uniqueness, that stealth by the faith you put in them. The excellence of your weapons. Faith is that dimension that you know. You believe that if I get into this market, as a business person, I can excel in you. And why? Because in your skills, you put the excellence of the assault of your faith. You can get into a region. Demonic powers everywhere. But to say, you know what? The excellence of my faith is its ability to assault as a weapon. It will assault those things. And if you attach that, it will conquer. Christianity as a religion started off with the disciples becoming the apostles now in the book of Acts. And they are going to be jailed, they are going to be beaten, they are going to be killed, There's all kinds of assaults. But the excellence of their faith as a woman broke through. Every person here right now, as I'm talking to you, the biggest question of this faith series is, is your faith a weapon? Is a faith that you can stand before people and not just believe, but use it as a weapon, as an assault? The way people carry a gun, and when you see a gun and 
He said, that guy is, is packing. Same way that when the demons see you carrying your faith, they say, listen, that guy is packing, he's willing to assault us. Here it says in Hebrews, what shall I say? What more shall I say? The time of faith. He says here, let me just go through this few of them. He says, they obtained promises. In other words, their promises were hindered somehow. Just like Daniel, he cried out to God, but the prince of Persia held back the one who was supposed to deliver his promises. These guys took up their faith as a weapon and assaulted that. And their promises came. There are promises that are being held back from you. Yes, God has released them, but they're being held back. Your faith can bring them to you. Let me move on. Stopped mouths of lions. A lion is a very terrifying creature. I've been to zoos, I've seen them. They're scary. They're agile too, and they're super strong. Now imagine a lion is charging at you. And you've got a gun. I'll tell you, that lion, no matter how big he is, how strong he is, that gun will destroy and kill that lion. Faith is the same. A lion is about to, you can take your faith and shut the mouth of the lion. A lion represents assaults against you. Creatures that want to devour you. Scavengers out there. You are capable by your faith to annihilate all of them when you know how to use your faith as a weapon. They escape the edge of the sword. In other words, people strategize against them to kill them, but their faith was a weapon against them. There are many things here. Out of weakness are made strong. By their faith. Church, let me tell you something. God has equipped you with faith, knowing that you are able to overcome with it. You can engage any enemy as long as you know how to do so. Let me conclude this evening with how do I make faith? I've talked a lot about what it is, what it does, but how do I turn my faith into a weapon? David and Goliath, back to that story. David could say, Give me my slingshot. And I can hail it at Goliath because David had skill. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, the prophets, all of them had a skill on how to use faith. One of the elements of sin in our generation of Christians is that faith has been just put up to talk. There is no dexterity to faith. How do you have skill? Trained to our skill. David trained in the, in the obscure times of his life how to throw a slingshot. And eventually, when the time came, he could use it skillfully. You need to take time. There are people you have to develop the skill, you have to be in church and be trained. On a way to use faith. When you come, you join prayer meetings. Corporately. You see God deliver the church. You see God do something for this person. You see, oh, you learn. Oh, on this day, they came down, they prayed. Today is a time of people being 
confused, aren't they? I laugh many of the times when people come up with, you know, unskilled, you know, display of faith. I've seen people come and tell me, you know, I went to a pastor and they gave me that I should be praying at midnight, uh, 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 you know, and after this I should be fasting twice. Uh, you see, God does not work like it's a doctor where you say, take two tablets at two times at night. In the morning, take two, and in the evening, take two. Then over here, do this. It doesn't work like that. The dexterity of faith is whereby you sit around and be trained. Jesus trained his disciples on how to believe. There are times that they went and they fell. They came back and said, how come we could not do this? You see, if you're going to have skill and your faith is going to be a faith that can has excellence and can, can become a weapon, you need to be under training. Discipleship. In this church, we do discipleship. So that the men will see how things are done. The day they will go out, they are able to do this, but their faith is a weapon. They do not fear. I was trained under Pastor Campbell. I watched him in many events, assaults against the church, assaults against his life. And I love to say that. And when the time came, I had the dexterity, I had the skill to apply. Many people are just out there with, you know, throwing their faith anyhow. And it doesn't bring any rewards because there's no skill to it. All these people had a skill to it. There's a skill to faith. There's a skill to every weapon. An AK-47 in the hands of a baby is just another toy. But in the hands of a soldier, it takes on a different dimension. Training. Church is not just a place you come and jump up and down and make that's not church. Church is a place where you're trained on how to make your faith become a weapon that you can make exploits for God and for your life. The faith that is a weapon is a faith of a person who has undergone training. Whenever I see a person who uses their faith skillfully, I go close to them and I say, who trained? This is a unique skill. The way they are vast, the way they stood, the summer where they trained, the summer where they learned. The disciples would see them stand against because they were trained by Jesus. You could see Timothy stand in Ephesus. He was trained by Paul. They were trained. Without training, a weapon becomes misused, mismanaged. And this is what many people are in church. They don't come to church to be trained. They are there just, you know, church, that's why preaching is important. That's why being part of a congregation is important. Because as you go through things together as a congregation, you're being trained. You shall see your pastor go through things. You shall see your brothers and sisters go through things. And you learn from them. But church needs discipleship. And this cause discipleship make skillful Christians who are able to turn their faith into weapons. For lack of time, I could have gone on. Probably I'll do a second part on the skills. God willing. But right now, let's bow our heads in prayer. You are here, you're not saved, you're not born again. You're not giving your life to Jesus just where you are listening to you. Faith has a weapon. The demonic has taken over your life. They've destroyed you. They've lied to you. Right now, I'm asking you, are you born again? If you're not, the Bible says, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. You're not born again right now. You need to be born again. You need to see the kingdom. Right where you are, I want to invite you to pray with me. I want you to say these words. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I admit I am a sinner. I have done wrong. I have offended you. But Lord, right now, change my life. I repent against all my sins that I've committed against you, I've committed against people, consciously and consciously. Sins I've even forgotten about God, I confess them to you. And every sin, oh God, please forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross. And three days later, he rose from the grave so that I can receive salvation. Accept my repentance for that. Let the grace of God come upon you through Jesus Christ yourself. Let all things pass away. Let everything come. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. For the rest of us, for a few moments, a skill. You need skill. You cannot shut the mouth of the lion without skill. You not, cannot quench the fire, the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, we are made strong. Obtain promises, work righteousness, subdued kill, need skill. That skill, skill is acquired. The trained. You need to put your mind to say, you know what? After this COVID 19, I'm going to become a disciple of the church. I'm going to sit down and trench. I'm going to put my mind whereby, you know what, let me develop my faith to become a weapon. Such that wherever I go, I have an excellence of a sort. When I sought to be precision in stealth, and I will become my testimony in my easy views. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone. Listen to this message. God, I pray, let them God catch the revelation of openness and discipleship. Lord Almighty, Father God, let them be true in their faith to be made into witness that will subdue kingdoms. God, quench their fire, obtain promises. They will escape the edge of the sword. Our witness will be made strong, valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of heavens, raised men from the dead, and on and on, God, because our faith has become our own. I give you glory, I give you honor, God, right now. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless everyone of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. May God bless you. Have a pleasant day.